Oh, he's unique. What is Finding Hitler all about? Um, this is a show that you're on, and it's on a &E. Is that what's on? Yeah, a &E is the parent network. It, it airs on History Channel. The show just concluded it, its third season, and it's captivated audiences by asking one simple but provocative question. Did Adolf Hitler really die in 1945, or did he manage to escape? Yeah, I mean... Not really? We don't know. Right. That, that's the... That's, I mean, this isn't like ancient aliens. This For many people, this seems like an outlandish premise. After all, we've all been taught that Hitler committed suicide in his Berlin bunker as Allied forces closed in. But the reality is, the official story has never been thoroughly verified. This is... We... They declassified a bunch of documents. Um, they both the Israelis, um, the British, and the Germans and Americans in the past 20 years have been de consistently declassifying documents. This isn't just wild speculation. It's grounded in real historical evidence. After World War II, millions of dollars were spent following leads and tracking Nazi escape routes, particularly into South America. Yeah, like millions of dollars. Like Hoover was like, no, 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 send more FBI agents to South America. Intelligence reports, eyewitness accounts, and even firsthand documents suggest that Hitler's escape was not as impossible as it once seemed. So Tons of real FBI documents with real leads, with real informants, some hand uh, or some first eye accounts. The widely accepted story is that on April 30th, 1945, Adolf Hitler and his longtime partner, Eva Braun, committed suicide in a bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. So what's the official story? The official story is that he killed himself, right? Yep. yep. He killed himself in the bunker with yeah. Eva Braun. Yep. However, there are several significant issues with this story. First, the remains that were supposedly Hitler's were quickly taken by the Soviets and never subjected to thorough, independent forensic analysis. Let's go back to 1945, April, um, in Berlin. You have the Allies coming in, wrecking shop, dropping bombs, blowing everything up they can in every single which way. You have the Russians coming in from the opposite direction. Additionally, the chaotic conditions in Berlin during the final days of the war made accurate record keeping and investigations nearly impossible. Allied bombing raids had reduced the city to rubble, and Soviet troops were entering the city in waves. Communications were poor, and many witnesses were either killed or scattered. There's, there was no, like, absolute proof no and a lot of nazis did escape and go to south america these reports were not isolated or dismissed as trivial the u.s sent fbi agents to south america spain and north africa to follow up on leads suggesting hitler's escape so what you had in south america both chile and argentina back to back had fascist regime regimes you had uh perone who was part of the Nazi party starting all the way back into the mid-30s. Nazi escape routes, the rat lines. After the collapse of Nazi Germany, many high-ranking Nazi officials, war criminals, and SS officers managed to escape prosecution by fleeing to South America. This was made possible through organized escape routes, often referred to as rat lines. Um, Golda Meir and David and Ben Gurion, the presidents of Israel, um, they they took the gloves off and they were just sending assassins to try to find these people and kill them. These routes allowed thousands of Nazis to flee to countries like Argentina, Chile, and Brazil, Spain, and Portugal. Many Nazis fled to Spain, where Francisco Franco's fascist regime provided safe passage. From Spain, escapees would travel to South America by boat or plane. Exclusively German and really missing home. Yeah. Yeah. So, 70 years later. Italy and the Vatican, some of the most notorious Nazis, including Adolf Eichmann, escaped via Italy. With the Vatican's assistance, Nazis were given false identities and helped to flee to countries like Argentina. Switzerland and Austria, Nazi officials fled through neutral countries like Switzerland and Austria, using forged documents and assistance from covert networks to evade capture. These rat lines weren't mere speculation, They've been proven through various historical investigations. And they came out of South America. They came out of Colonia Dignidad. They came out of Bariloche. They came out of Cordoba. They came out of Misiones. They came out of, yeah. And finding Hitler digs into these networks, tracing how key figures in the Nazi regime escaped justice. South America, a Nazi haven. Once in South America, these Nazi fugitives often found safe havens in fascist-leaning countries. A yeah. few hundred thousand yeah. descendants of Nazis yeah. 
Wow! German architecture, German language, and German customs dominate. Even more disturbing is Colonia Dignidad, a remote, self-sufficient community in Chile founded by ex-Nazis, which later became notorious for human rights abuses during the Chilean dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Colonia Dignidad was initially established as a utopian settlement, but evolved into a place of horrors. So, hunting Hitler. Are there any legitimate eyewitness accounts of Hitler in South America, or, or potentially legitimate? Absolutely, potentially. Many of the original founders of the colony were ex-Nazis, including war criminals like Kosef Mengele, the infamous Angel of Death, who conducted grotesque medical experiments at Auschwitz. Eyewitness accounts, fact or fiction. One of the most compelling aspects of the show is its investigation into various eyewitness accounts of Hitler's presence in South America. But people, and then this is the hard part, people want to be connected to significant events. And, and especially in small rural areas of the world. Over the years, there have been numerous reports from locals who claim to have seen Hitler or were been aware of his movements in the post-war period. For example, some villagers in rural Argentina claim to have seen a mysterious man with a small mustache arrive by U-boat on secluded beaches. Others reported seeing high-ranking Nazi officials in private meetings with figures who resembled Hitler. Right, you know, right, and, right. and but you know what they're trying to do, they just want to be connected. Yeah. So, and now we're removed 70 to 80 years from the facts. It, it has been painful to- The challenge of uncovering the truth, investigating Hitler's fate more than 75 years after his supposed death is no easy task. Finding Hitler uses a modern investigative approach, combining advanced forensic techniques with historical research. The show brings in special forces operatives former CIA agents, and Nazi hunters using the same methods that were employed to track down figures like Osama bin Laden. The biggest challenge in the investigation is sifting through the layers of misinformation and myth. To try to use real science, real investigative tools to try to sift through this lore. With so much time passed, reliable witnesses are few and far between and some people simply want to be part of a significant historical event, whether or not their stories hold up to scrutiny. Moreover, the secrecy surrounding these Nazi enclaves in South America makes it difficult to penetrate the inner circles where the real stories lie. What I want to say is, the way history is written is wrong. That, that's, that's clear. There's no way that we can say, he died on this day, this is what happened, here is his body. And While we may never know for sure whether Hitler escaped to South America, the evidence uncovered in finding Hitler forces us to question the traditional narratives of history and acknowledge the chilling fact that many Nazis did escape, spreading their influence across the globe long after the fall of the Third Reich.